This week on the Starting Over Stronger show, we're bringing you a special episode that is a reproduction of the Divorce Dialogues radio show that I appeared on a couple of months ago with attorney Catherine Miller. We're talking about retreats, going on a post-divorce healing retreat. This was life-changing for me a few years back, and I have shared with so many people about the difference my solo retreat made in my life after my own divorce. There was adventure, exploring inside and out. There was a challenge of just going and doing it alone. My solo retreat included journaling, reading old journals, exploring nature, writing letters I would never send, reading and relaxation. I had creative outlets and emotional work to be done. And boy, did I relax and enjoy that week. And I believe everyone who endures a divorce will benefit from a starting over stronger retreat. That's why I'm creating one and inviting you to join me. So no matter where you live, you can fly to Kansas City International Airport and take a shuttle to the location that is in Kansas. And it is called the Starting Over Stronger Divorce Healing Retreat, November 6th through the 11th this year. There may be more dates announced for 2023, but if your divorce is already final, now's the time. And if it's sure to be finalized by August or September, I hope you'll visit sosretreat.com and learn more about what I'm putting together for you. You can book a retreat clarity call to ask me any questions you have about the retreat and then come and be a part of launching into a new life that you love. If you're not yet sure, I hope today's episode sheds some light for you on why retreats matter after divorce. Enjoy. Welcome to the Starting Over Stronger Show, where you'll find help and hope for your divorce survival and recovery. Divorce well, live well. Welcome to Divorce Dialogues. I'm Katherine Miller. Divorce Dialogues brings expert guests to the airways to talk through your divorce questions and fill in the gray areas about separating. From thinking about divorce, to how to behave during divorce, to what to do after, this is Divorce Dialogues. Hey, welcome to Divorce Dialogues. I'm Catherine Miller. I'm the founder at the Miller Law Group and director at the Center for Understanding and Conflict. And I am on a mission to change how people divorce and help them divorce with dignity. And my guest today is Annie Allen. Annie Allen found her way to certified divorce and life transition coaching through helping people find their way to healthy relationships. From her own divorce, Annie shifted from her former training as a certified marriage and family counselor to help people who have discovered that divorce is the answer for their broken or toxic marriage. Annie offers private and group coaching, a weekly podcast, RSD realtor consulting, and post-divorce healing retreats. Annie helps men and women in their 30s, 40s, and 50s to execute the equitable divorce outcome they need to launch into healthy future life and a stronger, happier new life. Welcome, Annie Allen. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So you talk about in your in your bio uh, these post divorce healing retreats, and so tell us about those. But also, I mean, it might seem really obvious to anyone listening to the show why people need to heal post divorce. But what are people particularly needing to heal from, and how do the retreats help them do that? Well, most of my clients are not just going through a divorce because of maybe, you know, love died or, you know, there was infidelity or something somewhat benign, although divorce is never that exactly. But but more more often, my clients are coming out of highly toxic and abusive situations that they've been in maybe their whole lives. 
certainly usually for at least a decade or two. And so there's just been an incredible amount of, you know, almost like psychological warfare that they have been living in for a very long time. And so the concept of a retreat is simply a rest and a reset for all of that chaos once the divorce is all said and done and, and a person, you know, begins to feel like a couple of different things. One, they may be feeling like, okay, what now? Because there is no drama and chaos. And then the other thing that they might be feeling is just absolute exhaustion. And so a, re- a retreat is something that I actually did myself after my own divorce and didn't really even realize how beneficial it was going to be for me. And so I did some very strategic things during that week away by myself that I have since learned and realized were very pivotal in my healing and and being able to launch into a life that I love now. And so I've talked with many of my clients and friends about that and have encouraged people to do that for themselves. But it seems like people either struggle with the idea of going on vacation by themselves, quote unquote, or they just don't have the time or the energy or the know-how to plan something. So it just they just never get around to it. And I thought, you know, what better way to provide that than, you know, just to do that part for them. So all they have to do is show up and, you know, take part in the activities and, and in the rest and relaxation to, to be able to enjoy that. So do you mean Annie, that you, when after your own divorce, you did take the time for yourself, and, I mean, and I'm putting this in air quotes, to take this vacation, this time to heal on your own, and that was um, enormously helpful to you, and you find that other, for most people, could really benefit from more structure, and, and sort mm-hmm. of rather than saying, I'm going on vacation to heal from my divorce, which just doesn't seem to work for them. Is that right? Well, I mean, you know, any vacation is a good vacation probably, but a vacation with some intention will, I think, yield a better result than just getting away for a week, you know, to sit on a beach. Certainly, they both have benefits. So I, I would say do either, whichever one you can, because yeah. they're, they're all good. But but the concept of the retreat is, is a little bit more intention behind it with regard to just some very easy and enjoyable activities that, you know, could include things like specific journaling exercises and maybe yoga or meditative activities obviously spending some time with some coaching support, getting to know other women who are in your same shoes. And so I think that in and of itself is is a draw for some people because it's a vacation with a purpose. Yeah. So when you say that people at the end of their marriages are often have been recovering from years and years of psychological warfare, do you mean mm-hmm. during the marriage or does that start mm-hmm. before they got married and in childhood and, and then they just continued on into the marriage or what what do you mean by that? I think it goes both ways. I think uh, there's a fair number of people that chose the person they did for a marriage partner based on all they had known growing up. And so they maybe did fall into repeating some patterns that Obviously, at the time, they had no idea they were doing. That was certainly the case for me. And I think also there are people who had very nice and and happy childhoods, but for whatever reason, they ended up in a situation where, you know, it wasn't at all what they expected when they got married and and or it got worse over the course of time and became, you know, something very unhealthy with you know, a lot of manipulation and control and gaslighting. And and when you live in those kind of circumstances, uh, you know, a a year is a lot, but certainly 10 years or 20 or 30 or 40 is, it absolutely changes who you are as a person and how you process life. So it takes some undoing to really uh, unravel all of that. And certainly that isn't going to happen in a week on a retreat, but that can be a really good start and or finish to it if, you know, either you haven't yet begun therapy or maybe you have been in therapy for years and years and, and this, you know, getaway could be something that could kind of help bring some closure so that you can maybe move forward without that. It just really depends on, you know, your own journey and where you're at in that at that point. 
Your divorce is almost final. Now what? Do you want to make sense of the past so you don't repeat it? Maybe you're tired of feeling ashamed for what you've allowed in your life or the mistreatment you have tolerated in your marriage or for the fact that divorce is a part of your journey at all. Have you ever thought about making yourself a priority in your new life, but immediately worried you were being selfish? Maybe you're ready to break free of all the emotional ties to your ex and the unfulfilling or toxic relationship patterns of the past. I invite you to experience all this and more at the November 6th to 11th Starting Over Stronger Retreat in the perfectly peaceful Cedar Crest Retreat Center in Pleasanton, Kansas. On your Starting Over Stronger Retreat, you'll receive the rest you so desperately need, the silence and solitude along with the tools that allow you to reflect reframe and reset after your divorce so you can shift away from self-defeating and limiting beliefs and behaviors. You will gain authenticity, confidence, clarity, and grace, having learned my favorite proven techniques for a calmer, more centered head and heart space. And you'll be surprised how easy this transition can be and how amazing it feels. So don't miss out. Being an intimately sized venue, this event will sell out. Find out more now at www.sosretreat.com. I'm looking forward to meeting you there and transforming with you. Did you think that if somebody is listening to us and wondering, am I in psychological warfare with my spouse, that they'll they'll definitely know it? Or are there, are there some telltale signs that indicate that that's what's going on? I think that early on and maybe for many years, you really don't know because you're often being told that you're overly sensitive you're making too big a deal out of things. Here you go again, you know, dramatizing everything. And really, you're not. You're just responding the way anybody would respond to being gaslit and manipulated. But you're told these things long enough that for some people and for some period of time, you actually do believe it. And so you feel, you know, very much like all of this is your fault and why can't you just change and you go to therapy and you're you're just really trying to work on yourself. And oftentimes what happens through that if you have a good therapist is that they finally realize after a period of time what is going on and they, uh, you know, they handle it differently. Obviously, every therapist is different, but hopefully the vast majority anyway will will understand that that's what's going on and help you to see how to gain the strength and the clarity to begin to set some boundaries in your life and to start reacting differently to things in your marriage and hopefully create a possibility for change. But at least if not that, then at least make you able and aware to make the changes that you need to make if that includes exiting the relationship. But as far as whether they know it or not, I mean, it really just depends on where they're at in the cycle. It is simply the cycle of abuse, just like any kind of abuse, physical abuse. There's There are different periods throughout that where, you know, you feel like this person is amazing and wonderful. And then, you know, you go through that cycle again and, and you, you know, it takes doing that several times. I mean, they say on average, a person will leave their abuser seven times and go back, you know, before they'll actually end it for good. So, you know, in your bio, you, you talk about people who have discovered that divorce is the answer for their broken or toxic marriage. And I think Mm -hmm. for people who listen to the show, that question is such a big one. Is my marriage really bad enough to call it quits? And what what do you say is the answer to that question? How do people know this is really just not going to get better? There's nothing I can do. It's time to go. Or it's better to go than to stay in a dead marriage. Yeah. That's such a hard question to answer because it's so personal and it's, it's so different for 
every person. I mean, it, it you know, in the exact same situation, one person might feel ready and another person feel like they need to try again just one more time. I certainly did that many, many times. And so I, I don't know that I can answer that except to say that I think when you know, you know. There could be factors for you that were like mine, which was that I was financially dependent, which I think is a part of the cycle of this type of abuse. You know, it keeps you in a position where you really can't leave. And so I think the only thing that I can really say to that, which is what I did myself and it worked and I, and I've, I've coached other clients through this process and it can take years, but it really comes down to the recognition that therapy should be approached not so much like you might think of marriage therapy because the purpose of that you would think would be to go in with your spouse and to fix whatever's wrong with the marriage, but to approach therapy as I'm here to fix whatever is broken inside of me that is allowing me to contribute to or tolerate an uninhabitable, you know, circumstance in my relationship. And if both people are doing that, then quote unquote marriage therapy could work, but it requires both people having that same attitude of what can I do to make this relationship better? So if you're in the situation and your spouse is willing to go to therapy I would say the the most productive that I have ever seen in, in literally almost every circumstance I've been part of or aware of, it only really worked when each party went separately and they worked on their own issues and their own contribution to the relationship. And if indeed then both parties were truly uh, willing to work on their own stuff, they would figure out a way to come together and then maybe eventually they might have some marriage counseling sessions together as well that would be very productive. But in absence of that, you know, the only thing you can do is what you can do, which is to go to therapy for yourself and do whatever you need to do to, to unwind whatever's, you know, maybe gone on in your childhood or whatever's led you to be unhappy or discontent with your life and with your marriage and do whatever you can to heal those things. And as you do that, maybe it will help to affect positive change in the marriage. But if it doesn't, you're still going to be stronger and more confident and more prepared for making the decision to end it if that's the direction that it goes. Are you tired of feeling alone and stuck in your current situation? Whether you're in an unfulfilling or toxic marriage, in the middle of a messy divorce, or maybe still seeking a better life after your divorce, Starting Over Stronger has a support group for you. You'll meet weekly online with a group of women experiencing all the same pain, fears, doubts, and confusion. And you'll leave there each week feeling heard, known, and cared for. You will come to understand why you are where you are and how to move toward happiness and fulfillment, feeling supported. Don't put it off another day. Go to startingoverstronger.com now and click groups in the menu bar. Get registered. And for just $88 a month, you'll start this week being a part of an amazing group of women whose presence and affirmation will help you feel less alone and stuck and more clear and confident come what may. Really great advice. I want to remind people that I'm Catherine Miller and you're listening to Divorce Dialogue. We're here on WBOX 1460 AM in Westchester County every other Wednesday from 5 to 5.30 and we're also available as a podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And I'm talking today with Annie Allen about making a decision to end your marriage and post-divorce healing retreats. And Annie Allen, since we're talking about that, I know you run them. What If people are interested in looking for a healing retreat, what should they be looking for in that retreat? I think it's important that, you know, if, if you're going to go on vacation, just go on vacation, enjoy it, go where you want to go, go to places that your ex never would go, you know, do something that 
that, you know, you get to decide where you eat and, and all of those kinds of things. But if you really want to do something that is going to contribute also to launching into a new life that you feel more strength and more confidence, you would want to look for a retreat that is really focused on divorce recovery specifically and led by someone with experience personally and professionally in divorce and in possibly even in abuse recovery, if that is your situation, and look for a program that includes, you know, the kinds of activities that you would enjoy and a location that you would enjoy. I think the most important part is that it be something very quiet and and calming and and really just truly restful. If you're going to go on vacation, go on vacation and go do whatever sounds fun and enjoyable. But if you're going to look for a healing retreat, you're going to want to look for something that's really restorative. So what is it that you do in the healing retreats besides journaling and yoga that you think really helps people find some peace? I think, honestly, the key is spending time alone. And most people really struggle with that. So they don't do a whole lot of it. And when I say alone, I mean, it's easy to just go, well, yeah, I'm going to have a lot of that because I just went through a divorce. But people tend to keep their minds really busy to avoid thinking about things. So even if we don't fill our days with going to work and going to hang out with friends and and running around and shopping or whatever it is that we do, we turn on the TV or we have the radio on or we're reading a book or we're reading a magazine or we're on the Internet or we're we're on social media. We don't very often just be still and quiet with ourselves. And so I think the key to any good healing retreat is there's going to be a lot of quiet alone time built into it. And it's going to be constructive in the way that you're you're going to know what you're supposed to be doing with that time. But you're really going to be guided toward that aloneness, that solitude and silence where you can begin to hear yourself and and feel the feelings that you need to feel so that you can process through them. And that may sound painful for some people. It's actually very freeing, but it's also scary when you haven't done it a whole lot. So it takes some encouragement and structure sometimes to actually make it happen. (laughs) So Annie, you talk a lot about how you came to this idea about the healing retreat from your own experience. Are you willing to talk a little bit about what it was that you were looking, what kind of healing you were looking for? It actually, I can't even say that I was looking for healing because at the time when it happened, I I had been, you know, my divorce wasn't all that long, but it was pretty chaotic. But I had been in my relationship with my former husband for 30 years. And I had been in therapy for, I think at that point, I probably had been in therapy for about 11 years. So a long time in and out, you know, but I, I felt like for me, it was more of a, I probably had more of a vacation mentality when I actually booked the trip. I just thought, I just want to get away. I just want to go do what I want to do, go to the places I want to go and just get away for a while Mm -hmm. and just breathe. And I didn't, what I did that actually I think kind of changed everything was it was kind of a spur of the moment decision. And I had, I'm a big proponent of journaling. I'm I'm actually working on finishing up my, my book about journaling and the, and the method of journaling that I use that helped me to awaken to what was going on in my life and to gain the strength to exit it. So throughout those 11 years that I was talking about being in therapy, I had filled journal after journal with, with my, this practice of journaling that I developed. And, and I don't know why I did it. Honestly, I had just moved into a townhouse after my divorce and I had not put a lot of things away yet. And I was packing for my trip and I looked over and I saw this tote bag that had like 15 journals in it from all those years that I just hadn't put away yet. And I saw it and I thought, I should take all those with me and read them. That would be really interesting. And that really was bigger than I realized at the time that I did it. And I did. I 
weeks or that week that I was away, I read, I tried to put them in a chronological order as good as I could. And I, I read through all of them and I saw patterns in my life that I would never have been able to see if I didn't have those. And I also did a lot of journaling while I was away, but, but I just feel like brought a lot of closure to all of that chaos and, and nonsense that I had dealt with for so long. So I think that was a big part of it. And then just the autonomy of just going where you want to go and not worrying about it. Like go out to eat by yourself. I went and rode the Alpine coaster, you know, by myself. I went to where the uh, mountains were and they have those coasters you can ride down. And I, I just did everything that I wanted to do that I, I didn't need to get somebody's permission. And, and I, it didn't have to be something that my ex would also like because it seemed like we always had trouble with that on vacation. <laughs> and it was just like, well, oh, I don't have to worry about that. I can just do what I want to do. <laughs> Ads are so annoying, aren't they? As a podcast listener myself, I know this to be true. However, as a podcaster, I also know they are necessary. It takes a lot of time and expense to put together a podcast that airs every week and comes to you at no cost. As a woman recovering from divorce myself, I know that you understand my time is valuable. And that's why after almost two years on the airwaves and over 100 episodes, I find it necessary to start advertising to make it possible to continue to bring you this quality content that I know you need and want each week. But you can skip the ads altogether. Want to know how? Go to patreon.com slash SOS divorce, and you'll be able to select from three Patreon fan club member tiers that range from just five to $10 a month. You'll never miss it. And you never have to hear another ad again. You can also get bonus content, early access to episodes and more. That's patreon.com slash SOS divorce. And Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E. E-O-N. Thank you for your support of me as I offer support to you. We are all in this together. Well, Annie, I want to ask you about some of the activities that you do in your post-divorce healing retreats. But before I do that, I want to remind people that they're listening to Divorce Dialogues. I'm Catherine Miller, and I'm the founder of the Miller Law Group, and we're on a mission to change how people divorce. Where can people find more information about you? I am at startingoverstronger.com. There is a way to book a discovery session there or to book a single session uh, that you can also tune into the podcast there. There's lots of great information on the site, including a blog and uh, bios about me. If, if you have questions about anything, I'd be glad to talk with you. All right. That's super. So what are some activities that you do in your post-divorce healing retreats that maybe some people that can help? start implementing now. Mm -hmm. Journaling, obviously, one thing. Obviously, we've talked a lot about the power of that, right? But what are some other Mm -hmm. things that people can do? I think anything that you enjoy. So for some people, music would be a big one. I think uh, music can be very healing. Prayer is going to be very important for some people. You might even do things like journaling, obviously, we talked about, but also specifically writing letters to anyone with whom you feel you have unfinished business. Now, obviously, that should ideally include your ex if you're doing this post-divorce, but it may involve other people, too, because a lot of times in divorce, there is fallout in other relationships. So maybe other family members or friends that you lost in the process that you just need to get some things off your chest, but you know it won't do any good and and or you are smart enough to know that it's best not to do it with that person, at least at this point in time. And yet it can be very healing to write a letter to them that you will never send and even have some kind of a ceremonial destruction of that letter when when you get it all out of your system, whether that's burning it or tearing it into little pieces or whatever you you decide to do. Um, There's a lot of healing in that. That's one of the activities that we do sometimes. And and then just being out in nature, I think, is very healing for a lot of people. Fresh air, sunshine are just 
some of the best vitamins we could ever give ourselves. So we, we definitely always have an ample amount of that in any retreat that we do. That makes a lot of sense. And and so give us an example, Annie Allen, about some struggle or story of, of an attendee at one of your retreats as to the kind of realization she might have come to or a journey during that opportunity that would be an illustration for other people who might be considering. Well, I I can't think of a specific thing right off the top of my head, but I think that what most people experience is deeper than they expect to experience. I think most people get away and they think that they're just going to relax and, and just enjoy, and they don't realize the power of getting in touch with your own feelings and really processing through either the anger or the betrayal or the, or the grief and sadness of the loss of such a significant relationship as a marriage that you anticipated lasting forever and really facing those things and working through them is extremely powerful. I mean, it can alter the course of your spiritual life. It can alter the course of your career life. Maybe you you realize through doing that that there's some kind of calling on your life or something that you're really passionate about. And maybe rather than continuing in the job that you've worked for many years or trying to start a new career, maybe there's some type of a passion project that you want to take on that's going to feed your soul. And and I think it's those kinds of really deep things that come to the surface when we get alone and quiet that we so seldom do. You know, I think it's so true that many times when people are getting divorced, it's it's like an intersection in your life where you have a chance to take stock of what's happened up until this point and maybe reassess what you thought was important to you and move in a different direction if you think something else is more important or that you want to do. Do you find that that's true for for your people? Yeah, I've known many people that that has happened with, that they have just, you know, maybe they've been working for years, but they realize that they don't want to do that kind of work anymore, that they would really enjoy something else. And I think there's something about going through divorce that just makes you realize how short life is and that you don't have to play certain roles just because you always have. And so even if your degree is in one thing, but you really enjoy this other thing that you do that, you know, I, the one recent example that I have is a gal that, you know, she had a career for, I think, like 10 years and she just was really unfulfilled in that. And she had this opportunity fall in her lap to go work for the uh, animal shelter in the area where she lives and she's always been very passionate about animal rescue. She's been a foster mom to many animals over the years and and she, you know, this just fell in her lap and all of a sudden, you know, she started looking at the, the numbers and it really wasn't that much less um, to take this job doing something that she would absolutely love that honestly felt like a dream to her. She didn't imagine she could ever do that. I think that's an amazing story. Thank you, Annie Allen, yeah. for being my guest on yeah. Divorce Day. Thanks again for listening today to this replay of my appearance on the Divorce Dialogues radio show. If you enjoyed it, I hope that you'll check it out. Uh, Follow attorney Catherine Miller to learn more about that. And I hope you're inspired to invest in your new life in this amazing way with a retreat. And yes, it is an investment. and, And I truly believe that anything worth doing is sometimes going to be a sacrifice. And so you've probably learned that in some very intimate ways as you've gone through your divorce, you you have sacrificed things to make it a reality to live in a way that is more conducive to who you are as a person that is a more healthy um, place to be in life, or whatever it is that you have faced or are facing as you go through your divorce, you understand sacrifice. And so just know that this retreat opportunity is the same. It's going to be an investment, it's going to be a sacrifice, but you are going to come away from it changed. You are going to be 
able to reframe everything you have been through and are going through in a way that is going to launch you into a new life that you can love. And who can put a price tag on that? So again, just visit sosretreat.com and then let's chat soon about making you a part of this event. And I'll meet you here again next week for more help as you divorce and hope as you are starting over stronger.